Hello everyone, I'm Yina and I'm here with Jeremy to talk about the Mail API. So Jeremy, why use the Mail API? It's a good question. So I think the Mail API for me is just a great opportunity for developers to kind of access the mailboxes of nearly 100 million consumer users across the world, but also tens of millions of organizations that use Outlook on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. We live in mail. So having the ability to use the API to get into those messages and kind of trigger business processes or make their lives easier is really important. That's great. That's so true. So tell me a little bit more about the scenarios that actually developers are using the Mail API. Yeah, it's funny. Like, as I mentioned, lots of people have mail, and there's lots of times where business processes make sense to hook in. Mm -hmm. And so we have this notion of a change notification event that you can subscribe to. Uh, essentially, it's a webhook that as a message comes into your mailbox, it can call your service and essentially allow you to make a decision based on what message data came back. One of the most common scenarios we see partners doing is having this ability that maybe they have a mail that comes in from a customer and they want to store that mail against their CRM account. So the CRM service would subscribe to that webhook saying every email that comes in, I want to monitor. And if I see one from Yina, I'm actually going to go in there and track that message and store the information in my CRM record so that when I go into my CRM system, I can see all the mail from Yina inside of my CRM system. So it's a poke and pull model rather than constantly having to query data. That's yeah. right. I'm not, am I there yet? Is there mm -hmm. another message? Is yeah. there another message? It's basically just going to let me know when a new message arrives. Yeah. Also in the Mail API, there's opportunities for developers to participate on how we're making our mail experiences more intelligent. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, so there's this notion of a focused inbox, mm -hmm. which has been part of Outlook for a while now, which makes some decisions via machine language on what things it thinks is important to you across all of your mail and your mailbox. Yeah. And so as an enterprise, there might be a decision made that Yina's mail is always very important for everyone. And so rather than rely on the machine learning to make that decision, you have the ability for the uh, inference classification properties of a mail message to make it high. And then as you do this to mail that's coming through, the machine uh, learning algorithms will actually take that into account and learn that across the board. And you can do that as an individual user mailbox, or you could do that for a rule for a particular set of mailboxes in the organization. So it's a really nice way of keeping the intelligence and training it as you're going along. That's very nice. How about you tell us about some other capabilities on the mail API? Sure. As a developer for a long time, I used to spin up an SMTP server on a box somewhere to be able to send mail. Those days are kind of gone now, and we really think about things like using SaaS services to provide and send mail. With the Microsoft Graph, you can send a mail on behalf of a user. So if I'm signed into my application, I need to send a notification to someone else that maybe I've marked a task or I've allocated a task to them. You have the ability with the API to actually send a mail on behalf of that user and provide the subjects and the body, and, and that will appear in that person's inbox without the need for all of the mail services in the background. That's great. Let's see it in action. Sure, let's try now. Inside of my uh, Graph Explorer here, uh, you can see I'm actually logged in as Megan Bowen, um, so who's my alter ego right now when it comes to doing demos on the Microsoft Graph. And as you've seen in the past, the slash me here is basically going to show Megan's default profile information. Now, we have the ability inside of Graph Explorer to show more samples based on the different services that are available. In this case, I have Outlook Mail and Mail Beta uh, enabled, so I can see those on the left-hand side. And so if I just show a basic one of high importance mail, essentially I'm just doing the whack me, whack messages uh, with a filter of importance equals high. And again, you can do that for the various different other filters to transition your messages. But inside of the API, we can also, because this can be quite overwhelming in terms of what's returned, and you might only really want to see to start with when you're playing and, and exploring the data, that you want to just get at the subjects of the different mail. And so when I click Run there, you'll see that there's one email that's being returned as high importance, and the subject is a project update question mark there. And so it's just one really super sweet example of showing you how you can do that send message. Another one here is the ability not only to see things of importance, but things sent from a particular address. So in this case, I'm using the standard identity query filters here to filter from the address where the mail is coming back. In this case, I'm showing ones that were sent from myself just for demo purposes. Um, but again, we can do that select query in here and build that query up to show just the subjects from things that have been sent from that particular email address. Now, in addition to that, just to show you with Graph Explorer, we can do things other than just get examples. 
So in here, if I click on the send an email here, um, there's just a post body here where I can define what the subject of my mail is gonna be, the content of the body of the mail, and where this is gonna be sent. And if I click run query, in this instance, I'm actually gonna get an access denied error here. And that's because I'm signed in as Megan Bowen and I haven't given Graph Explorer enough permissions for me to run. So if I click on modify your permissions here, and I scroll down here, to send a mail, you'll need a particular permission called mail.send. And what this will do inside of Graph Explorer is exactly what you would do as a developer with your application, in the sense that it's gonna ask Megan to re-sign in and to consent that there's more permissions it needs to give that application. So if I click accept here on the send mail as, as you, now when I come in here and I scroll down to send an, a mail and click run this query, you'll actually find that now we'll get a nice 202 success code. And if I went over into Megan's mailbox here and went to my inbox, you will see that the mail has come, uh, sorry, and so now if you come to the person's mailbox and you click on their sent mail, you'll actually be able to see that Megan sent that email to Garth F um, with the new cafeteria open message. So it's really great to very quickly get in the Explore using these samples of the Outlook mail. And one little tip about Graph Explorer, if you wanted to see all the little intricacies of this API, if you click on the little document icon there, it will take you over to the send mail documentation where you'll be able to see exactly what properties and what's supported as part of the information here inside of the send mail APIs. So as you can see here, I just sent 10 million emails to Yina's inbox, and that was the demo for the Graph Explorer. Thank you so much, Jeremy, and thank you everyone for joining us today. Remember, go to graph.microsoft.com to start playing with the APIs and all of the capabilities it has to offer. Thank you.